You know what Disney characters are underutilized? Mickey and Friends. You wouldn't think so, but the expanded Mickey Mouse universe isn't very well explored. There's an entire world of characters that most people aren't aware of, waiting for their big break into the mainstream. That said, the few that have managed to break through have become fan favorites and regulars in Mickey-related productions. Enter the topic of today's video, Mortimer Mouse. No, not that Mortimer. Not that Mortimer either. Ah, there we go. Mortimer occupies an interesting place in the greater scope of Disney characters. He made a name for himself in recent decades as one of the few genuine a-holes in the cast. And this week, we'll be covering his history across all of the Mickey Mouse oeuvre. So hot chat cha your way to a seat and sit back as we learn about him together. Mortimer Mass debuted in the Mickey Mouse comic strip series by Floyd Gottfriedson in October of 1930, during the Mr. Slicker and the Egg Roberts arc. To make a long story short, Minnie's father is in trouble and Mr. Slicker offers to help in return for his daughter's hand. In the end, it's revealed that it was all a trick and Slicker was behind it all. He became a regular in the strips, always trying to get the upper hand on Mickey and steal Minnie away from him. The Mr. Slicker moniker was later dropped, and he was called Mott Mercy Rodent, and finally, Mortimer Rodent. While Pete was still his nemesis, Mortimer was that one jerk who always knew just what to do to get under his skin. The character went through a few designs over the course of the comic's lifetime. His initial design mimicked the classic 20s, 30s designs of Mickey and Minnie. He had oval eyes with black pupils, not too dissimilar to Mickey in Playing Crazy. He usually wore a hat, bell bottom pants, a necktie, and carried a cane. He also sported whiskers and buck teeth. When he was reintroduced as Mott Mercy, his design mimicked the later animated ones, with smaller eyes similar to Mickey's Fred Moore design. This became the standard Mortimer look for all of his future appearances. It's a well-known piece of trivia that Mickey was originally going to be called Mortimer. Walt's wife Lillian thought that name was too haughty and encouraged him to go with a different name. To what extent this influences Mortimer's nomenclature is unknown, but it does lead to an interesting contrast. Mickey is shy and small, while Mortimer is tall and boastful. In fact, with his long nose, teeth, and whiskers, Mortimer doesn't resemble a mouse as much as he does a rat. What was that? Back on track, Mortimer made his animated debut in 1936's Mickey's Rival, introducing him to a wider audience. In this cartoon, he crashes Mickey and Minnie's picnic, taking Minnie's attention much to Mickey's chagrin. It seemed like he had the upper hand. He's charming and charismatic with a good sense of humor. But at the first sight of danger, he bolts, leaving Minnie behind. Mickey comes to a rescue and Minnie is reminded of what really matters. A little aside because I found it interesting, this short appeared in the live action series Sing Me a Story with Belle, an educational program hosted by Belle from Beauty and the Beast. It was accompanied by a new song that related to the episode's moral. The moral of this episode being, of course, it's what's inside that counts. Belle compares Mortimer to the episode's special guest star, Gaston who shows just a stunning amount of self-awareness over it. Mortimer was exactly like you. He was really... Charming? So... No, he was so... Witty? No, he was... Handsome! So full of himself that all he could really see was himself. Really? Let me continue. Despite his prominence in print, Mortimer wouldn't make his next animated appearance for another 60 years. He had a small role in 1999's Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas in the Gift of the Magi segment. His role is very different from his usual one of Mickey's rival. Here, he plays the stingy box of a department store that Minnie worked at, kicking off her arc in the story. Instead of a holiday bonus, he gives her a fruitcake. Though it was brief, it must have left an impact because it was the start of the Mortimer Renaissance. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> that same year, Mickey Mouse Works premiered at the Disney Channel. It was a return to form for many of the classic Disney animated characters, a series of shorts that put them into new, modern situations. Seriously, it's great. Mortimer made his debut in the episode Mickey's Rival Returns. While Mickey tries to relax on the beach, Mortimer shows up to make it hell. He challenged Mickey to a volleyball game, with the winner being able to ask Minnie out on a date. When Minnie found out, she was furious that Mickey thought she was a prize to be won. Though once Mortimer tries putting the moves on her, she's saved by Mickey and they go on their date after all. Mortimer became a regular in the series, always trying to compete with Mickey for Minnie's affections. It's implied that he's her ex-boyfriend, and though he claims to love her, he's still a selfish jerk. He's also pretty sexist, seeing Minnie as a prize and not caring for her agency. He also has a tendency to flirt with every other woman he sees, so you can guess why Minnie would break up with him. Still, he's crafty and sly, managing to manipulate everything around him to get Mickey in trouble. 
There's an episode where he manages to get him arrested under false pretenses. Of course, in the end, he always gets his cathartic comeuppance. Direct from downtown Main Street, it's Disney's House of Mouse! Stop knocking at the House of Mouse! Mortimer's role as a reoccurring antagonist carried over into Mickey Mouse Works' spiritual successor, House of Mouse. I believe this is where most modern audiences were introduced to Mortimer, and it helped propel him back into the spotlight. He frequented the club, up to his usual antics of ruining Mickey's life and being a womanizer. The women he's pursued on this show have included Minnie, Daisy, Clarabelle, Megara, Anastasia, Trisella, the Queen of Hearts, Laverne, and probably a bunch more that I couldn't find. He often gets on the club patrons' nerves, to the point where not even the villains like him. Even Pete, the club's evil landlord, hates him. He's that much of an insufferable jerk. One notable episode involved Mortimer masquerading as a restaurant critic. He gets everyone to do his bidding, unless he gives them a negative review. It's like that episode of South Park where Cartman becomes a Yelp reviewer. Among his demands are playing more and more cartoons, forcing Minnie and Daisy to sit with him, and eating all of the shellfish, including Sebastian. Once it's revealed that it was a trick, Mickey hosts a roast to him, which everyone gets in on. I think that's beautiful. No matter if you're a villain or a princess, we can all come together to hate Mortimer Mouse. Mortimer made his CG animated debut in Mickey Mouse Clubhouse in the episode Super Adventure. Megamort, as he is here, wants to shrink everything, including the clubhouse, so he can have it all to himself. And his shrinking glove kind of looks like the Infinity Gauntlet. He recruits Pete to help him, leading the team to get superpowers. He turns on him eventually, forcing Pete to team up with Mickey in the game to stop him. Even in a show for preschoolers, Mortimer's a jackass. He later laments that he did it because he has no friends. Gee, I wonder why. But, because kids show, the gang forgives him and says they'll be his friend. He also gets a song and joins in on the hot dog dance. In addition, he made a cameo in the show spin-off, Minnie's Bow Tunes. He made another appearance in Mickey and the Roadster Racers, in the episode Daredevil Goofy. He's the racing star, Morty McCool, who Goofy idolizes. Though he comes off as a badass action hero, he's actually an arrogant jerk. He's stuck up, egotistical, and has terrible sportsmanship. In a race, Pete and Horace get stuck and he doesn't even stop to help them. Even when Goofy helps him out, he doesn't even bother helping him back. Goofy realizes that he didn't need to win if being a winner meant being a terrible person. But that ends up being the key, and he was named winner instead. He's had a couple appearances in the 2013 Paul Rudish cartoons, with a design reflecting the other characters in the series, and dressed in his Mickey's rival attire. His most significant appearance so far has been in the short, A Pete Swarmed. Deviating from his usual attempts of ruining Mickey's relationship with Minnie, Mortimer tries to ruin his relationship with Pete. Pete sees Mickey being bullied by Mortimer, and is heartbroken that he has a rival other than him. Even as Mickey tried to win him back, Mortimer continued his efforts. Luckily, Pete fights back, and he and Mickey resume their usual antics. In the modern era, Mortimer's had two major voice actors. In Once Upon a Christmas in the Paul Rudish cartoons, he was played by Jeff Bennett of Johnny Bravo fame. Ah, well I say he's a schmo, a schmen, a chameel, a dingus, a doofus, a dimwit, a duck. But in most of his appearances, he's played by voice acting legend Maurice LaMarche. LaMarche has been pretty consistently voicing Mortimer since Mickey Mouse works. His performance is said to be an impression of comedian John Lovitz. Good idea, Mick. Finally, I'll get a chance to show your audience some real comedy. <laughs> oh, I didn't know they made a film of your last date. Oh, hearty har har. While they are the main voice actors, a few other actors have taken up the mantle. Jim Meskimen played him in a series of video games, and Paul Rudish played him in one episode of his series. The original actor who played him in Mickey's Rival is unknown, but it's believed to be an actor named Sonny Dawson. That said, I've seen Pinto Kolvig, the voice of Goofy, credited as well, so this is still up in the air. Wow! If it ain't my old spitty, Minnie Mouse! Mortimer made his video game debut in a series of Disney sports games for the GameCube. He's also an unlockable character in a golf game for the PS2. Unfortunately, despite his recent wave of popularity, he has yet to appear in the parks in any significant way. He was spotted on construction walls at DCA, but nothing aside from that. That said, if you go to Minnie's house in Toontown and listen to the radio, you might hear a news report about him. Mortimer Mouse, former sweetie of Minnie Mouse, was arrested today following the robbery of a portrait of Minnie. He was caught by the Toontown police when he tripped and his head smashed right through the portrait. Mortimer says he was framed. Disney doesn't have a lot of jerks. 
The antagonists are typically over the top and extra, sinister and calculating, or plot twists. I think that's what makes Mortimer stand out. He isn't evil, he's just an asshole. We might not know any evil stepmothers, but we do know a few assholes. I think that helps make Mickey more relatable and human, seeing him have to deal with such everyday problems. And it makes us root for him even more. So Mortimer fills a nice niche in the Disney family. And I hope you'll continue to stick around for years to come. And that is everything you'd ever want to know about Mortimer Mouse. Now I'll pass the question off to you. What do you think of Mortimer? What's your favorite of his appearances? Is there anything you'd like to see done with him in the future? Whatever you're thinking, let me know down in the comments. But that's all the time I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.